this morning. Um, Sheriff Mueller and I are standing with two of Sheriff Mueller's uh, good deputies. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard about this uh, letter that the president from Shaw University has written about a traffic stop that's in question in Spartan County during the period of Roll of Thunder. Um, I want you to know that I didn't hear anything about this except from the news media outlets. Um, nobody texted me, nobody emailed me. President Dillard didn't reach out to me um, to find out if what she's been told was truthful. Um, she mentioned stuff such as the pretext of a traffic stop, which was not a pretext at all. It was uh, a driver of a Greyhound, or a, I think it was a Greyhound bus, or it was a big Greyhound-like bus. Uh, it was silver or white, light in color with tinted windows on it. Now, that's very important. It was driving up 85. Um, the officer saw him weaving around in the, in the lane, stops the bus driver, asks him, or tells him what he was uh, being stopped for. He never one time questioned that. He didn't say, no, I wasn't, or any of that stuff. Um, the officer was very courteous to him, as the video will show as I release it a little bit later, that um, he made a traffic stop, asked the guy, could he see his paperwork? The guy complied, very nice bus driver, very good representation of his company. Um, the officer asked a few questions like who, who all you got on the bus, who, you know, while he's trying to find his paperwork, you know, where you headed, these kind of things. And the nice lady that was in the front was apparently a student. Um, they had a very cordial conversation between her and the officer, which is hardly uh, an interrogation. Um, she answered some of the questions that the um, officer was asking of the bus driver. Uh, the officer asked if they searched the bottom part because you never know what's been put on the bus. And he said, of course you can. He gets out with consent, opens the uh, three of the doors. One of the bay doors was broken, so we didn't open that one. The dog, while on a leash, one dog. Um, no students were taken off of this bus, I might add. And the dog ran through the uh, baggage, alerted on one of the bags, and they opened up the bags and, and looked through them. Didn't take the stuff out, didn't throw their stuff on the ground just looked through it and saw that it was, they did find some donuts, I might add, uh, so, but that's not what we were looking for. Uh, prior to that whole week, we had stopped 39 different buses on, on Operation Roll of Thunder, 39. This bus was unmarked with tinted windows. We had no idea uh, and no way to know who or what was on that bus, if anybody was on the bus. So I know that from Raleigh at Shaw University, it's about a four hour drive from there to here. So it's not unlikely or, or out of the question that the bus driver was getting tired. You know, I don't, I don't know the reason why he was weaving, but he got a warning ticket after the whole thing was over. Uh, President Dillard said they were searched by bloodthirsty dogs. There was one dog, he was on a leash. The students were never even close to that dog. None of the students were even asked off the bus. She said something about armed police officers. I don't know why she had to go say something like that because we're all armed. You know, we don't walk around, we're not, I don't know any unarmed police officers, but uh, I think she was trying to indicate that we had weapons out and all this stuff, and if that was the case, if, if that's what she was intending to say, none of that's true either, as you'll see in the video. The reason why I waited so long to say this is I was trying my best to meet with Dr. Diller. I had another African-American pastor whom I trust and like, tried to set the meeting up. He tried two times. I talked to her one time, so that's three times that I've tried to speak with uh, the president of the Shaw University. Now, I wish racism would die the ugly, cruel death it deserves. And if anything we're ever doing that is racist, I want to know it, I want to fix it, and I want to never let it happen again. But this case right here was absolutely nothing to do with racism. I have no idea why the president wrote the letter the way she wrote it. I really have no idea why she wouldn't come down here and look at the video. Because I've had a NAACP leader, leader by the name of Pastor Eddie Parks to come and look at it. And he said, Sheriff, he said, there is nothing to this. And I said, I know, I know, Pastor. So he said that he would be happy to stand up and talk to you guys if that's what you wanted to do. I, I don't have a problem when someone points out a problem for their department. I really don't. But to just go off and say things like this with no evidence, I'm, I'm very, very, very disappointed 
that a lady of her education level would make such, such an uneducated statement to the press to try to get some people stirred up over this. Now I'm doing this press conference because I got men and women in our community that are concerned about this. So I want you to know, and you will see on the video later, there is absolutely no truth to what she said. Nothing. I, um, yeah, we, we, we get called a lot of things and we get attacked about a lot of things, but I, I just really don't understand this one. Um, I have, again, I've reached out to Dollar Dealers one time, the pastor's reached out to her two more times, so I know there's three times that she's had an opportunity to come and stop all this. So we had a meeting set over her Friday, so I learned that Friday morning she writes a letter to her congressman in North Carolina trying to get the Department of Justice involved in this case, which there's really no case for them to be involved with, as, as you will see. So it's very disappointing, and we find her comments toward these two officers who did a magnificent job, I might add, a very, very good job. They were so professional. Um, as you'll see, I find that libelous and slanderous and libelous on her part representing Shaw University to talk about these two officers the way she did. So Sheriff Mueller has got some comments that he would like to make. Yeah, I'm not going to rehash what Sheriff Wright's covered, but as a sheriff of Cherokee County, part of Operation Rolling Thunder, uh, when the complaint first was brought to our attention, when we watched the video, there's absolutely no truth in any of the remarks made by the president of that university. Uh, it is sad that as a sheriff, we have to stand up and defend our men and women who do things right. There's absolutely nothing there. The only thing that she said accurately was a traffic stop was performed in Spartanburg County. When our guys come up behind the bus and they can't see in it, when that bus is stopped on the side of the interstate and you can't look up into the windows and see who's on the other side, we don't know what color, how many people is inside that bus. And let me say this, because a lot of times comments have been made or it was a minor traffic violation. The number one leading cause of death in buses and commercial vehicles is driver fatigue. If my guys see a bus weaving in their lane and they fail to stop it to check that driver to make sure they're not too sleepy, then we could have a busload of Shaw students that was involved in a traffic, tragic traffic fatality. We all know I-85 is a deadly corridor that runs from Atlanta all the way up to Raleigh. So it's disheartening to know that when you guys do things right, that you still have to get up and defend their actions. Uh, we're not defending what they did, because they didn't do anything wrong. What we're having to defend is the racism part. Between the two sheriffs here, there's over 70 years of experience. We didn't get where we were without accountability amongst ourselves and holding our people accountable. And I think my tenure as sheriff in Cherokee County, his tenure as sheriff here in Spartanburg County, uh, I think the public and the citizens in this area know that we hold our people accountable and we're going to do it the right way. <clears throat> and when we don't do it the right way, we're going to acknowledge it and we're going to fix those problems. But in this case here, there's absolutely nothing to fix. They did everything right. The bus driver was asked, could we search uh, the luggage compartment? He consented, came off the bus, he opened it. One dog was on scene, not multiple dogs. The dogs never went on that bus. They never searched those students. They never asked the students off that bus, put them in any, in any harm's way. And I find it hard to understand how someone on a bus who could be humiliated by what these officers did, when nobody even riding by could see who was on the bus. We couldn't see who was on the bus from the outside, much less the general public that's traversing I-85 here in that traffic stop. So someone, uh, Dr. Dillard's position should be trying to help bridge the racial divide that we see in our country each and every day versus fanning the flames of racial divide. And this truly, when you see the, the, the portions of the video, body camera that will release, you'll clearly see that there's no allegations, out of all the allegations she made, there's absolutely zero truth in it. Thank you, Sheriff. I might want to add before I start taking questions, um, my PIO called and asked if the bus driver had any issues with the traffic stop, and he said absolutely not. Uh, another little key fact is they come right back down I-85, 
going home to Charlotte instead of going around Spartanburg County since this was such a horrific problem, just so you'll know. Um, the statement she made was just false. So I'll try to take questions if I can. Did we cover it all that well? Yes, sir. Um, I may miss this, but what was the cause for requesting the search, consent for the search? What was the cause? Like, what was the motivation for requesting? We were doing Operation Roll of Thunder, and we'd searched 39 other buses and got uh, up on one bus stop, we got $500,000 cash and two kilos of cocaine. And it's very common that buses traveling, the bus driver may not have any idea what's going on underneath when they throw bags under there. So that's the reason why we checked. And we asked for consent to search, and they said yes. Yes, sir? Uh, to that note, do buses tend to yield more contraband, whether it's drugs or... Um, I don't want to say buses tend to yield more contraband, but we have searched other buses. <coughs> Excuse me. We have searched other buses and found things. You know, because obviously the bus driver, he doesn't check the bags when he gets in there. He don't know if there's $2 billion in cash or, or a little bit of marijuana. He doesn't know. So, yes, ma'am? Um, I know you can't really, see, you couldn't see inside the bus. But, no, you could um, not really, you could not see inside the bus, Myra. You just couldn't. So, were there any other buses pulled over with white people? Just Yeah, 39 other buses, and a bunch of those were white and Hispanic people. Some of those were even asked off the bus. And we didn't ask any of these young people out. It seems to me we ought to be more concerned about the bus driver not have been tired of weaving in the road and we protect those young people that are on the bus. Were there any reports about that bus weaving in the road prior to the traffic? It's not that we know of. That's the reason why the officers did a great job noticing that kind of stuff. Can you explain uh, Operation Rolling Thunder and you know the probable cause that goes along with uh, searching this bus that you pulled over and other cars that you pulled over? I don't, I'm not sure I understand your question, but we never search anything unless we have a valid reason to A, uh, stop a, a, on a lawful traffic stop. And we can either do a free air a sniff with a dog or we can get consent. In this case, we got consent. Do you think this will impact the future Operation Rolling Thunders? No, we're going to do it. We're going to do it again and we're going to keep doing it perfectly like these gentlemen right here did. I, I'm going to tell that this is for the men and women who have called me. Uh, I've had white and black people call me about this traffic stop. I'm not going to tolerate that stuff. I don't like racism. I, I really want it to die the horrible, ugly death that it deserves. But we have to let it die. Now, if there had been a problem on this traffic stop, I give you my word, this would have been addressed. Me and the sheriff would have addressed these two young men, but there's nothing to address. Nothing. And, and just because somebody um, screams racism, please at least get the facts first. Let's, let's try that out for a, for a new one. Instead of going to the media and um, getting some people inflamed about this, which I get it. I mean, I, you know, if I'd have read this and didn't know anything about it, I'd have been like, oh man. But I, I watched the video and I'm going to show y'all the video too. And, uh, you're not going to find anything racism on this. Yes, sir. Do we know it was the driver a Shaw employee? And then what happens if a driver does not? No, uh, he was a, an employee with a bus that they had contracted with. And it was an unmarked bus. I had no idea. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that the bus driver said they were from Shore University, which I don't even think exists, um, and it was even indicating it was a church group. So, um, so we had no idea this was Shaw University. You know, Dr. Dillard expressed how proud she was of the students. Me too. You know, they were very polite and cordial young men and women. You know, hopefully some of them will come here and work one day because we need smart and good kids to come and work with us. But the things that she was saying were just false. I don't, I don't know who told her that stuff, but it's just false. But she had an opportunity to come and see for herself and never did. So I think I'm going to cut it off at that. And, uh, you know, one of the people that potentially come through Spartanburg and certainly the people that live here to understand that we are going to do it right. And I'm not gonna tolerate racism either. You know, my my King Jesus won't allow me to do that. And I'm not gonna do it. So let's um I'll let you make your own decision after you see the videos. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.